Hey kitty, you've been hunting rabbits. How are you? Yeah. You've been hunting. Yeah. Busy day. Clever kitty. I know you're clever dog. So, whoops, I'm going to trip on you if you're not careful. I'm going to let the sheep out into this paddock. They've had plenty of drying off. Oh, look, one is already trying to get through. I've been fiddling around with the fencing. Up, oh, she got caught. Oh, she's rubbing. You're rubbing the sap from the. That's what you're doing. You're rubbing the sap from. This is a uh, dock. Isn't that right? Okay. Okay, girls. I'm going to let you through. Hey, kitty. Let's see. Which part? Oh, this part. Okay, it's going to take two hands to do this. And the sheep are already lining up. Isn't that right? Isn't that right, kitty? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take two hands to do this. I'm undoing the fence. And Ovenmet decided to, ow, jump on top of me. <laughs> Come on, Ovenmet. You're either going to get up further or not. See, all the sheep are now waiting. And I've got a cat on my shoulders. Oh, and the alpaca. <laughs> Stop clawing me, that hurts. Okay. Everybody's waiting for me to open the gate. Dogs, you're gonna have to move out of the way. Ovenmet is still on my shoulder. I don't know if you can see the sheep are all. That really hurts clawing me. You know, that's just a t-shirt. Hmm? So they're all looking fat and jolly or getting fat and jolly. Some of the really skinny ones are still a bit skinny. They're all getting, recovering from uh, being mothers and being milky mothers. Anyway, you're going to jump down because you're scratching me too much. So there's, oh, look at the buzzards. Pair of buzzards. Woo! So there's long grass and short grass in here. There's clovers and buttercups and bird's foot trefoil and dock and all kinds of things. What are you guys doing? I've got to put this tie this back over here. Okay. There we go. So they now have a gate because they have to go get water. The water is all the way over there. But they're fine. They're all drying off nicely. Oh, I can hear Java in the distance. All the long grass I've walked through. He uh, has gotten lost. I'm gonna have to go find him, poor fella. 
all this lovely fresh stuff, huh, a little bit. And look at this. Beautiful bird's foot trefoil here. You can see, this is buttercup. Yep, those are buttercups. But this here, you can just see, it's about to bloom, is the bird's foot trefoil. Here you go, another one. So there's lots of that in here, and that's really good for worming. This is excellent stuff for uh, natural worming. Oh, and I've just stepped on another one. Look, at, there's more. Here it's in bloom. There's the bird's foot trefoil in bloom. More bloom. So that's in bud, and that's in bloom. So there's loads of it here, in amongst the buttercups. You can't differentiate in the yellow on the video, I'd say, with the buttercups and then the bird's foot trefoil that's blooming. They all look yellow. Anyway, I think I've got some happy sheep. Isn't that right, dogs and kitties? Okay, we're gonna have to go now um, and find Java. I think he's lost. He got lost in the long grass and I can hear him yapping. Oh, what's really cool in this area that was really um, chewed over through the winter because it was my one little area because it was such a wet winter for the horses. You can see it's a huge amount of dock. That's a natural warmer. And yes, there's thistles. But what's really cool is in a lot of these areas, I got the guy who's mucking out to dump these around in here to resuscitate the soil because it was really well damaged because of the horse, the action of the, the um, poaching, is there's lots of bees and wasps nest in here. They're using this as fantastic stuff for nesting in. So I better go find Java. Okay, the sheep have been in here and you could say they've overgrazed it, which is the intention, because I want them to dry off. But you can still see there's these daisies here, which they normally love. And then just walking over here, look, there's more daisies, there's clover, there's clover flowering, as well as the thistles and nettles. And there's Java! Okay, you're found. You're found. You got lost, didn't you? Oh, poor boy. Yeah. But this is where the pathway that the horses trod. And this is basically the thistles are saying this is compacted and chewed over. So it's thistles in this whole alleyway that the horses were in. But what's interesting is that the alpaca and the sheep have been eating the blossoms. They've missed that blossom, but they've chewed the tops off of so many of these other blossoms. So they're eating the thistles. And we found Java. Picking cherries. And the dogs are all picking cherries off the ground. Because the birds keep throwing them down, sadly. They throw them down when they're not quite ripe. Those aren't quite right. As you can see, those are darker. But loads and loads of cherries. The birds get the top two thirds, or rather three fifths. And I only get the bottom bit, but the birds still eat the bottom bit. Look at that, just crunching cherries. They're all hunting for cherries and eating them. Isn't that what you're doing? You eating cherries, Inca? I can hear somebody's popping a cherry. Oh, that's bear and Inca. There's Maya. They're all hunting around for cherries that the birds have thrown to the ground. You can see there's loads. Look, there's cherries there. But the, cher the floor is littered in cherries. So the foxes come in here and you can smell. Oh God, the phone got tangled in some cow parsley. But the foxes come in here and eat. The ground is littered in cherries and cherry pips. So all the dogs are having a lovely time eating. 
Except you. You're not eating cherries, are you? You are. I know you are. But the cat isn't eating cherries. Cat's not interested in cherries, are you? No. Yeah. So this is a wall that was redone a number of years ago and you can see it's already rewilding. There's ferns and valerian and these wallflowers and things like that. But I want to accelerate somewhere else. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel off some of this moss so that I get the bits of brown root underneath you can see there. Now, I was told that this works. So I've got this collection here, this ball, a whole series of mosses, and I'm gonna put them in this blender with some live yogurt. So we're gonna see if this can accelerate the new cemented capped walls faster. So here is my collected moss. And the first thing I'm gonna do is get it all wet because a lot of it is really, really dry. So I'm gonna soak it before I chop it up with the yogurt. There we go. Now I'll let that sh soak for a little while. Okay, now I'm gonna put in some of the moss. See, it's got the root side of it here. Putting that in there. Now, I'm gonna try a little bit and see what happens. This lid goes on top, it fits in there. If I can get it right, square. There, I think. And then I press it down and twist it. I have to do that with two hands, so I've gotta stop video. Okay, so this is the herb thing. And you pull this, it's one of those cheap ones you buy at a discount shop. So I want to mince this up as much as possible. Let's see. Now I think I'm going to mince that up a bit more. more if that will make it precious this is a different kind of moss by the way this is a different kind of moss so I'm gonna put that in there now this I'm not gonna be using this implement I suppose if I wash it out well enough it'll be fine to use for chopping herbs but I got it for this reason so hopefully Yeah, that's really well chewed up now. That's perfect. Okay.
There we go. That's very well chewed up. So that's the roots and the moss and everything. Now I do the next stage. Okay, the next stage is live yogurt. So put some live yogurt in. Okay, that's enough. And then mix this, this salad of moss and live yogurt. Salad. Okay. What are you moaning about? You have fresh field behind you. Silly sheep. Anyway, I'm here on this wall that's relatively newly capped. You can see the wonderful wall builder. You can see the moss beginning to grow over. So it'll take a little time. But I wanted to get the whiteness down to be less white and more moss covered. Hence, I made this salad. So basically, what you do is just paint it on like this. And during the winter, or if you remember, those of you who've been following me, I was putting stuff on top of the wall and the blackbirds kept taking it off. And um, uh, disrupting their growth of the lovely succulents and stuff like that. So this is what I'm told is another technique and basically all the chopped up mosses and their roots and everything are in the yogurt. And if I do this enough, the birds won't think to pluck it. And you rub it into, you see how porous the um, cement is. And so I'm basically trying to rub the root structures of the moss into the wall. And the um, yogurt feeds it for a little while, or gets it going, hopefully. The bacterial stuff of the wall, I mean of the uh, mosses. Anyway, I maybe should have chopped them a bit finer because they're still big clumps. But we're gonna see how this goes and develops. I don't know how long it'll take. Look, I've got now company of alpaca but this is the perfect kind of day to get it going. We had lots of rain last night, so the cement wall is quite wet, but it's rubbing all of this in, not painting it in with a paintbrush, but rubbing it in so that you can see the stuff. You can see where I've done it and where I haven't. So it gets into the pores of the wall of the cement. So, let's see, can you move out of the way? I don't want to step on you. Move, there we go. So this is hopefully gonna activate lots of moss. Anyway, I'm gonna keep doing this with my audience of two alpaca and one roaring ebony. Not ebony, a uh, little bit. Oh look, there's a third alpaca up there too. So I'm gonna keep doing this here on this wall. So this week, we finally did the finishing touches to this plantation of uh, old fashioned apples. So the electric fence is on. This is to keep the sheep out for until the trees grow tall enough so that the alpaca and the sheep can't browse. So underneath each of those, around that is some of the daggings and fleeces that were too matted to use and then we put the wood chip on top so that just keeps the moisture 
in so when it dries out they won't feel the drought so much so this is what we've done this is the electric fence ticking off of some uh, this is some grass wet grass so there we go that's a whole bunch of new apple trees planted so that'll be what apples I don't eat the wildlife will be able to eat and in the spring that's more pollen for the pollinators and then over here is the um, one of my favorites is the papal and its blossom in the spring is absolutely spectacular so it'll grow up it's got loads of light here it won't get as tall as the electric fan uh, electric fence that's not an electric fence that's the mains electric it will never get that tall it's not on a tall rootstock so I'm looking forward to that because boy do they bloom I mean in the spring those trees the papal is buzzing with insect life so yeah and look other areas the grass is growing as are the nettles as are the silver birch so it's all in all, it's getting to look like a good thing. I still haven't moved this pile of old fence posts over to that pile of old fence posts. I need to do that at some stage just to have them all together. Never mind. There's always work to do in the countryside. Never a moment to be bored.